to hear your word, to have our hearts transformed by your message, that we might become the peacemakers, that we might deliver your gift of peace into the world. Gracious Lord, speak unto us now, whether through me or in spite of me. For this we pray. Amen. How long, O oh Lord, until you come in final victory? How long, O oh Lord, until you lay waste to all of evil in this world when you shall lead your army and legions of angels and bring about the destruction of those who oppose you? How long, O oh Lord, how long until we may feast at your heavenly banquet, when we may stand victorious and triumphant in your presence? How long, O oh Lord, until all may know your peace and all may stand before you? How long, O oh Lord, will you be angry with us? How long will you let us suffer in our in, for our iniquities? How long, O oh Lord, Will you cause us to endure the slings and arrows of this world? The prophet Isaiah was used to waiting. As we talked about last week, he is a part of a people who waited for almost 400 years for a Messiah, and then even when the Messiah came, most did not even recognize him, and most are still waiting for the Messiah. They were looking for peace. They were looking for a hope of a future where God's reign would come, and, and all would know that he is Lord, and, and when the people of Israel would be put in their special place as God's priests, as, as God's children. As a church, we who are now the inheritors of God's kingdom, we who have received that peace through Christ the Messiah, we still sit and wait and anticipate Christ coming again. We anticipate his triumphant return as, as we look to the skies and expect the, the legions of angels to follow behind him as he creates a new heaven and a new earth and as he sends the judgment down upon those who who do wickedness and evil. Maybe the questions, though, shouldn't be addressed to God. Maybe the questions about when God's peace will reign on earth should belong to the church. How long, O oh church, will you continue to hold grudges and anger in your heart? How long, O oh children, will you continue to judge and proclaim self-righteousness and destroy the faith and confidence of non-believers. How long, O oh children, will you build up walls that prevent relationship? How long, O oh children, will you ignore the chasms that divide humanity? How long, O oh church, O oh children, Will you continue to sit and wait for God to come and deliver a peace that looks more like uniformity and conformity than simply loving one another in such a way that you no longer raise arms? How long, O oh children, will you continue to build weapons of war and destruction and use them against brother and sister. How long, O oh children, will you continue to not see the diversity of creation as a blessing, but rather as a way of categorizing and disdaining one's earth and propping oneself up? How long, O oh children, will you, will you continue to neglect those in the world who, who need your help while you sit 
comfortably in your pews and in your beautiful white churches and wait for your deliverance. The church was called to be the peacemaker. The church received the gift of Jesus Christ. It received the very peace of God for our salvation and with our salvation. We are called to be the peacemakers, to be the blessed, to be the ones who allow God's kingdom to be here and present on earth, and yet the church has caused more war and tumult and turmoil in the last 2,000 years than it has offered for peace. As a group of believers, we have fought against governments. We have taken control and forced non-believers into conversion. We have crusaded against the infidels of other religions, destroying them with impunity because they didn't believe in what we believe. Even now we wage war against governments over whether evolution should be taught in schools versus creationism. Or whether we should be allowed to pray in schools or on the steps of the Capitol despite the fact that Jesus told us to pray in the privacy and secrecy of our closets. We wage war against culture claiming that Saying happy holidays over Merry Christmas is somehow an oppression against us. When it is us who oppresses the others by not acknowledging that there are more to celebrate than Christmas. And that some don't even celebrate that. We wage war against culture when our coffee cups stop reflecting the Christian privilege and begin to have a more wintry decoration. We wage war within when our theologies don't all agree and we try to determine who is sinner and, and who is saint and who can be ordained and married and who can't and who is righteous and who is unrighteous, we create division. We built up a class of aristocracy in Europe at the cost of the poor. A system that has translated and continued to be brought down through the colonies and places around the world that were impacted by European rule. We still claim and struggle and fight and war against those of other belief systems rather than loving them and tolerating them and showing them a better way to live in peace and harmony. This Advent, while we wait for peace, perhaps now is the time that we start making peace as we were called to do. Perhaps now we acknowledge that Christ's peace was given to us when he came down to earth, when he died for our sins and when he rose again so that we might have new life. That the peace that we are anticipating with Christ's second coming is a peace that does not demand that everyone it believes the same thing or does the same thing or acts the same way, but instead it is a peace that comes with the celebration of the diversity of all creation. A peace that is derived from the tolerance and the appreciation and the love that we share universally and unconditionally with all of our brothers made in God's image. Regardless of gender or skin color, 
regardless of lifestyle or economic situation. Perhaps it's time that we begin to make the peace that we so long desire through the power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit which dwells within us and we begin to show the world a better way, the way that Christ intended, the way that we are to love the world first and foremost, the thing that we are called to do most of all. And we build bridges across those chasms that divide people and we help people to feel welcome and accepted into the communities of faith, wherever they are, however they believe, whatever they do or have done. Perhaps it's time we start tearing down the walls that we build between each other and our relationships, the walls that cause us to see people as the other. Perhaps it's time we start to, to smooth the pathways through the desert so that Christ can be seen coming in His glory. Perhaps it's time we, we start to make way the straight and narrow path that others may know Jesus Christ through our lives. As we approach Christmas and our celebration once again of the coming of Christ, as we anticipate the second coming, it is time that we stop looking to the skies and waiting in our comfortable pews for something to happen from above and instead take the responsibility that Christ put upon us and start making the peace. It's time that we start repairing those broken relationships within our own individual lives when we reach out to the people who have hurt us. And we offer them forgiveness. Not necessarily opening ourselves up to abuse again, but, but allowing the pain and the suffering to be let go. Perhaps now, perhaps now is the time that we call up old friends and long lost relatives and offer them a little bit of hope and a little bit of love. Perhaps now is, is the time that we let go of those things that weigh down our hearts, those feuds and those, those places of anger, those old wounds of the past. Perhaps now is the time that we embrace the peace of Christ and we allow ourselves to not always be right when it means that it can hurt our relationships with others. Perhaps now is the time that we lose some arguments even when we know we're right. Just for the sake of expressing God's love, we let it go. We are the peacemakers. We are the ones that God put on this earth to prepare the way for the Lord. His greatest strength is not a legion of angels, an entire army that can wipe across the face of the earth and destroy all things. His greatest power and His greatest strength is the love that He has for us, the love that He gave us, the love that He has for all of those who are not part of us at this time, but that He wishes and that He longs to reach out for. The peace that Christ desires to be built is not built on the hands of conquest. It is built through loving relationship and beloved community in which all come to experience and know Him, in which all hearts are changed, not by force, but by an understanding and a desire for a better way of living, for fulfillment that only Christ and God can give. Before we can bridge the giant divides of the, the countries and of the communities and of the culture, 
we must start with ourselves. We must bridge the gaps in our own individual relationships. We must repair the damage that we have done and seek forgiveness, seek amends. We must let go of our pride, our egos, our self-righteousness, and seek to live as servants, not clamoring for privilege or positions of power, not clamoring, clamoring for special preference or to be the spotlight of society, not expecting everyone to bow down to our wishes, whims, and beliefs, but instead allowing theirs to coexist and to feel support while the rest of the world rejects, dejects, and tries to destroy them. It's time that we start building up the kingdom of God by making peace and spreading love. Amen.